Hey everyone, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and boy are we in for a treat today with my review of the LEGO Star Wars 7675 ATTE Walker with 799 pieces, 6 minifigs, and a $90 retail price upon its release in the summer of 2008 as part of one of, if not the greatest LEGO Star Wars waves of all time with that summer 2008 Clone Wars lineup. Anyway, that $90 price tag inflation adjusted is about $115 in 2021 money. However, if you want to get one of these brand new and sealed box like I have here, tape and all, you are going to be paying more like $650. It's about what I paid for this thing all said and done. It's not very cheap to get these things. They've become quite the collector's item. I still remember me and my dad and my mom finding this early at Walmart in the summer of 2008, probably in June or July, and Walmart had it street dated so we couldn't buy it. And even if we could buy it, it would have been a Christmas gift. I was not going to be getting that right away, but it was something I was so excited to see on the shelves that day, and I am still very giddy seeing this in my room now here, what, 12, 13 years later. This set in particular is based on the 2008 Clone Wars movie and not the show, therefore it depicts Teth in the background. That's the planet. You can kind of see the monastery, I believe, in the background there. You have a battle droid on a stamp, and we, of course, have Rada the Hut, seeing as it's from the movie and Rada was a pretty crucial part of the plot of that movie. Anyway, the back of the box shows three other LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars 2008 sets, and then we have four main features of the ATTE. In this video, I'm also going to show how this set can connect to the legendary Republic dropship, so make sure you stick around to the end to see how that happens, and hit the like button if you guys enjoy this one. Let's get into the minifigs. Our first minifigure up is the classic Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker. You can see his armor print is pretty good. Really, these characters just lack leg printing. It's 2008, and it's just not really prevalent. They also do not end up with double-sided faces either, so you're really just stuck with this look for Anakin, which some people don't think is the best. I like it. I think it's a unique look for Anakin Skywalker. It gives him something a little bit different than what we see in most of the other Anakin minifigures, so I like the big eyes and everything. That's something that some people are critical of, but I'm just not. We do have the blue lightsaber, which is nice, but this is the time when they were just using the light gray hilt, which is arguably the worst looking hilt they ever made, because they had gotten rid of the chrome by 2008, but they had not really invented their newer chrome-ish color by 2008, so you're just kind of stuck in this middle ground where they're like, oh, we'll use light gray for now, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look particularly great, I would say. For our Ahsoka minifigure, we see the same concept with the lightsaber just using the light gray hilt, but with a green blade in this case. Her leku or head tails are considerably smaller than what you see on modern day Ahsoka minifigures for the simple reason that this is Padawan Ahsoka. This is the first Ahsoka we ever received from Lego, and at that was the first time we had ever seen Ahsoka in a Star Wars movie or show. And as such, her head tails were much smaller, so they didn't travel as far down her body, so they have it pretty appropriately sized here, I would say. I really like her face and her body print. I think those are reasonably accurate, but much like Anakin, it kind of suffers from a lack of extra detail with like leg printing or anything of the sort. Our next minifigure is the regular Clone Wars clone trooper, and this is an absolute classic at this point in time, 13 years after its original release. I think this one still holds up really well, obviously minus the leg printing, but I mean, the face on it is just perfect for the helmet. I mean, it looks great if we look underneath the actual face of the clone trooper is very reminiscent of that Anakin. You can see those big googly eyes, as some people would probably say. I like this one. It's not the most accurate, but it is the one that I grew up with, essentially, so really do appreciate it for that. And then we have a really good torso print, pretty accurate to what we see in the Clone Wars as well. You can see a lot of detail on the back, and this figure is going to be the one-size-fits-all singular trooper in the set, uh, along with being your pilot and gunner. So yeah, this is like the only clone to do that in an ATTE. Kind of sad, to be honest. Speaking of clones, we had our debut of Captain Rex in this set as well. It looks rather good. Um, definitely the armor needed some work and it did get that work in 2013 with the updated phase two Captain Rex, but for the 2008 phase one Captain Rex, this was more than passable. It's one that I really loved as a kid. They've got a ton of the markings right on him, which is something you'd certainly appreciate. You can lift up his visor here to get a better view of that helmet print, which is stellar. 
love it. You can see the torso print is actually gonna be the exact same as this clone trooper. They just used the same torso, but gave them blue arms. And underneath the helmet, you'll notice he has a significantly different face than the regular clone trooper with quite a stubbly beard. So that is a great addition to have his own unique face. Because this set was based off the 2008 Clone Wars movie, it did include Rada the Hut. This is a figure that is super unique. It is a very rare figure. These days, we only really ever got him in this original 2008 Clone Wars wave. And I think he's really cute. He's obviously really ugly and frog-like, but like, honestly, he's got like a cute charm to him. He's got yellow eyes. You can see a little bit of the pupils in there. His arms are somewhat poseable. You can actually spin them around. So you can see you can make them angle backwards if you want, which actually makes it look like he's moving rather fast forwards. So I kind of like that. Um, but yeah, he does have a singular stud on the bottom. You can see that he's connected to that clear piece with, and that's how you could have another minifigure or character hold him. If you have played with, collected, looked at Lego Star Wars sets for any even small amount of time at any point, during the last 20 years, you probably know what a battle droid looks like and know exactly what you're getting yourself into when you get a battle droid in a set, and there doesn't really need to be much else said about it, but the cool thing about the battle droid in this set is that he comes with a stab. Now this stab is supposed to have a little bit more detail than what you see. On this front one by two tile, there's actually supposed to be a sticker with a pattern on it. And unfortunately in my brand new sealed 2008 ATTE, it was seemingly lost to time. They did not include this little sticker on the main sticker sheet. I can only deduce that it was included on a separate, very small sticker sheet that is probably just lost in the instruction manual or at some point somehow fell out of the box. But this is a really good looking staff that holds up to today. It also does come with a clear stand so that you can have it looking like it's actually flying around, which I always loved about the staffs that they included that. And the battle droid does have those two curved arms that allow him to hold on to the handlebars of the staff there if you just clip them on basically pull his legs down and in and you have your battle droid on your staff ready to take on the ATTE, the clone troopers and the jedi in the set not a particularly fair fight but this staff is really cool and i love having it for the collection you can also move the gun up and down a little bit i guess kids might enjoy that but realistically just leave it like that and call it good for your display man this ATTE is a beast and I somehow almost forgot that, even though I have another ATTE sitting on the ground down there. One that's very dusty and very modified from its original form. But nonetheless, this thing is incredible. And for $90 back in the day, it was pretty much the ultimate playset for the price. I guess we'll start from the bottom with the feet on this set. All six of which are pretty much the exact same build, bar the middle feet, which have a slightly wider base. They use just bigger slope pieces. You can see the difference there. And then as you get into the actual legs they're a pretty similar build just at different angles at times there is one bad thing about the legs i would say and that's that on one side it's asymmetrical on one side the studs are facing forward and on the other side they are not I don't like that. I never really realized that that would be a pretty easy thing for them to have fixed in the design. All you would have to do is flip the Technic connection on this as you're building the set. Now, a good thing about the legs are the inverted radar dish pieces, which are used as armor on the sides here, and they are printed. They were used interchangeably with both the ATT and the AT-ATs of the era. So you actually saw these printed pieces on both sets. Now, as for the posability of the legs, that is interesting on this set. You have two legs on the front and the back, which are pretty much the same design-wise and function-wise. So you can pull them back and you'll see, you'll notice, you can move it all the way back to be completely vertical. But as soon as you let go, it slings right back into position. And that's because there's actually a rubber band in there. And you can see that rubber band wrapping onto this Technic pin here that wraps onto the front of the leg here and basically when you pull it back that rubber band is the reason it's going to be slinging back into position you can see the rubber band at work here as you pull the leg back that rubber band extends and then of course it's going to want to pull itself back together so when you let go it pulls it right back in so pretty interesting way they designed that just to keep the legs at the proper angle now the middle legs are different altogether they have no rubber band attached to them at all they're rather flimsy in fact they move completely on their own you can independently place them forward or backwards so that you can actually make it look somewhat like it's in a walking motion i definitely like that this one's a little bit more free flowing and the actual foot does have quite a bit of posability. You can see it move a lot as I spin it around here. And that just allows you to essentially place the ATTE as you please up on a bit of terrain or something. It just gives you that 
extra movement that you're gonna need from time to time. And why not give you a quick look at the underbelly before we take a look at the external armor. Speaking of that external armor, it is really good on this set. They've done a nice job of adding in some dark red for detail, dark gray to kind of break out the monotony of light gray. We've got a Republic logo here. We have a little bit of armor hanging down. We do have some rather large gaps here, which allow you to see into the interior. That is something that definitely is a flaw in this one. Around back, we have a couple of bubble turrets, which can work well at times, but let's see if we can get it to do it here. Um, you can see it lifts up a little bit depending on how you're playing with it, but like really what can happen is it can just snap off rather easily and like that's not fun at all. So definitely could use a bit of a reinforced connection. Maybe I should just push it down further. Personally, I just think they look weird when they're pushed down that far, but it does alleviate the issue of them like just snapping off randomly. You can lift this back section as well, although you will find nothing up under here. A lot of people back in the day did modify this area to hold an ATRT like we would see in later seasons of the Clone Wars. The armor on the other side is the exact same as what we saw on the right side. The armor on top though is really interesting because it's got a lot of stickers for detail. You can see there's a lot of lines and dark red added into here using these sticker pieces. They are slightly annoying sticker pieces because they are the clear sticker piece. So instead of doing a dark gray on dark gray, they do clear on dark gray to retain the exact same dark gray. But at times you can see air bubbles. I don't know if you can see them on this camera right now, but definitely it was a problem depending on how you would apply these stickers. Stickers. So I think I was a little extra careful knowing that going into this you can see a particularly large bubble there uh, For that one, but that's not even on the clear part of it But yeah, that's definitely a problem with big stickers like this You'll end up with like a big bubble like that But generally it does add a nice bit of detail to the top of the ATTE and moving on to the big cannon on top It looks amazing now It does have a slight weight distribution issue whereas you can tell it wants to lean forward Unfortunately instead of just holding its backward position 100% of the time like as soon as i move this it just starts to angle down as you know it's just not particularly great for me but it does have a seat for a single clone trooper and that will definitely help your weight distribution there i don't love how far away the handlebars are for him he can't really grab at them there's no control panel there either that's something that the set just lacked unfortunately but it does look good with him on there and you can actually spin this 360 degrees because of the base, which is awesome. And at that, you can actually move it up and down a little bit more when you get it off to the side because the whole cockpit isn't in the way. So you can actually point it down further and point it up a little further as well. I think the area for the pilot up here is quite simply amazing. It's a marvel. It's got a lot of features packed in around it as well underneath the armor, which you'll see. But if we remove this bubble turret, you can see there's actually a nice sticker detail inside. You get a much better idea of some of those bubbles that we'll see in the sticker looks like it's even peeling now that's a problem don't like that at all that's why i bought this new so that wouldn't happen um but you can see the red kind of travels down and there's just some weird gaps there i don't know definitely a bit odd at times and like i said the sticker's peeling that's just not ideal whatsoever but we can open the cockpit by pulling down on this at the front here and you can see there's actually a whole seating area for him in there that you can pull out just like this and it does not have a control panel either although it does have two antenna pieces which you can essentially use to pilot the thing so placing our clone trooper in the seat should be just as easy as it was before and if you put in the extra effort you can actually have him hold on to those to pilot the ATTE. you can see the rest of the interior of this thing just has really nothing going on there's no extra stickers or control panels on the side you can definitely see that sticker peeling there i'm going to need some glue but you can see the rail system essentially for this to slide right back in perfect and you close this up and there's your ATTE pilot now ready i guess he doubles as an ATTE pilot ready to go to battle that's amazing looking for me though the coolest feature on this ATTE resides right below this piece of armor if i push down on this dark bluish gray cheese slope you'll notice something looking in the darkness it's one of those mega spring shooters so you can push down on this and it will fire off. Now these things pack quite a punch. They are not measly stud shooters or the spring-loaded shooters of today. They are very, very powerful spring-loaded shooters and for good reason. Let me show you what's hiding underneath here. If you've never seen one of these, you really have been missing out. Did you have a childhood? Probably not. So this is how the entire mechanism works. When you push down on this piece, it pushes back slightly, which is gonna run into this, which in doing so fires off the missile. So you can see just like that and it's gone.
And just for a good example against your opponent in this set, the stab. Oh, I think we slightly missed it. I think we just grazed it. I think this may provide us with a more direct hit. Yes, very nice. The set's interior is unfortunately somewhat disappointing. So accessing it is pretty easy. All you have to do is lift up this section on the top. You can lift it up all the way, which is great. It gives you really easy access. You can actually pull away on these panels on the side. You can see the small piece here, which is where it is allowed to hold itself into place. So that way it doesn't just freely flow, but you can see I slightly lift it and pull it out. But despite there being a lot of space for potential things, they really do not utilize it at all. There's literally just a couple of seats that you can put a clone trooper or two, even though you don't have a clone trooper or two to spare in this set. And you have a small storage area with a small tank on top. As you can see, this is just a box that you can pull in and out and it really does nothing else. It's rather sad how little interior usage you get for this front section. I mean, even with all this wasted space at the front, they don't bother to give you something to look at here. Like I feel like you could put some type of display panel or something at the front for the troops in there to be looking at and discussing strategies or something in there is just literally nothing. It is rather sad how little floor space there is in here. This back section is going to be more of the same. We can lift this up just like the front. We can pull these slightly out and that gives you access to what is a completely removable section in there. Just pull up like this and as you can see you have four seats in the back for zero clone troopers that you have for those seats, uh, which is nice. It's nice that you have a little bit more space in the back, a little bit more walking room back here as well, and a weapons rack. That's definitely more than you get in the front, but I still don't feel like it's enough. And that brings us to the final great thing about this set, and that is the carrying handle located dead center in the middle of the ship. All you have to do is pull up on it and you're good to go. You can carry the set around. It makes holding something like this way easier. It's slightly front heavy, but that's not a big deal. I don't think it's too front heavy. It's really nice. It's not something that you have to worry about breaking. You can move it quite a bit without any trouble. Really loved the carrying handle on LEGO Star Wars sets. That was something they introduced in the mid-2000s, and it has hung around to this day because it is such a great thing to have integrated into sets. It makes holding things way easier. You don't have to worry about something breaking as much, so there is a lot of good reason to have a carrying handle, but for this set specifically, there was the greatest reason to have a carrying handle. You didn't think I'd forget, would you? It can work with the Republic dropship. Okay, so it does work with the dropship, but it takes a little bit of elbow grease. You actually have to move the carrying handle top part down one singular Technic hole. So once you've done that, you're ready for the drop. Now, unfortunately, unlike the ATOT, there's no way to lock this handle into place while you're trying to grab it with the drop ship. So you have to hold it with your hand. So it does become a little bit more difficult than with the ATOT, but it is still more than doable, just like this. And then we're gonna apply some force and we are attached and good to go. And as you may be able to tell, it does look a little bit awkward on that ATTE. I mean, it pushes down on the front of it very hard and you have to move the cannon out of the way. Like it definitely is a bit awkward because the ATTE and dropship were not 100% designed to go with each other. Like the ATOT was designed to go with the dropship, but this works and that's what's great about it. If you had this set as a kid and you had the dropship with the ATOT as a kid, you were really sitting pretty with the two of these together as well. Or you get another dropship along with your ATOT and dropship, and then you could have dropship for both your sets. Ooh, la la, fancy rich kid over there. But nonetheless, you can lift this up and play with it just like you would the dropship and ATOT, which is really nice. And removing the dropship from the ATT should be just as easy, all the same, and you're good to go. This is obviously an absolutely legendary Lego Star Wars set, a nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 in most people's books, including my own. I'm giving it a nine out of 10. It definitely has a couple little flaws that have shown through during this review, but generally this thing is so good. It could really use a couple more clone troopers though. I mean, really Lego, you got like eight seats in this thing and literally one clone trooper that can sit down. How does that make sense? It doesn't, don't tell me it does. Anyway, this thing's so cool. I love this. It was a great part of my childhood and probably many of yours. If you don't own one, they are very expensive. If you want one new and sealed box, probably about five, six hundred dollars. Is it worth that? That is something you have to decide for yourself. And of course, if you can afford that, it's not cheap. I would say that if this was like your favorite set growing up and you have the money, 
hell yeah, dude, go out and buy one. Um, you can certainly get one used for, for significantly cheaper, probably at least half that. Um, and that might be a little bit more palatable for a lot of people. But really, if you have the opportunity to own this at a reasonable price, don't pass it up. This is forever and always going to be one of the most legendary Lego Star Wars sets, especially given that it's from the Clone Wars. So let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the like if you enjoyed, and you can check out more Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars set reviews on the end screen now.